Okay, our Coors Light poll winner for Sunday's 18th annual Sylvania 300 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway is Brad Keselowski, and he drives a number two Miller Lite Ford for Team Penske. And uh, this is Brad's fifth pole in 2014, his eighth pole in uh, his career. This is the 19th track qualifying record this season in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. This is the eighth track qualifying record for Ford in 2014. And it's the fourth time that Brad Keselowski has set a qualifying record this year. He's dead in it Phoenix, Dover, Kentucky, and now New Hampshire. So congratulations, Brad. Um, you know, you, you just What were the tracks again? Phoenix, Dover, Kentucky, and New Hampshire. <clears throat> and, um, you know, you just keep, you keep rolling. And just talk about, uh, you know, coming off that Chicago win and, and now here at New Hampshire, uh, you said last Sunday you weren't going to let up, and, and certainly uh, it, it doesn't look like you have. No, I think, um, you know, Paul and the team brought a great car here, um, much like what we had uh, in the spring race. I say spring race. I guess it was in June or July, so the, the earlier race. Um, and I think uh, the cooler temperatures and all those things, that's why you're seeing the increase in speeds, and, and certainly the – uh, guys have you know worked on horsepower and all those other things, but uh, cars are uh, really good. This this kind of track is kind of right in my wheelhouse, uh, right in our team's wheelhouse. Uh, so uh, you know we're we had this race circled before the the chase started, uh, and we felt decent about Chicago, but really felt like this was a a race of emphasis for us to get a win and get out of the first bracket. And you know with last week considered, it's. Uh, uh, you know, in, in an even stronger position for us uh, to be uh, uh, pushing hard. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's good, right? We just want to keep it going. Questions for Brad? Uh, Mike Hembree has one right there. Mike Hembree, USA Today. Are you ready just to say the chase is over and it's pretty much a lock for you? I mean, <laughs> no. nobody's caught you at all so far. Yeah, I mean, we're so early in this thing, you know, um, and the resets, you know, with the resets that there are, uh, you know, the success of today really means nothing come Homestead, you know, and each bracket with each reset, you know, it's, it looks like an NCAA bracket and in that sense to compare it, it'd be like, um, you know, if, a uh, great NCAA AA team beat a lower ranked team. It doesn't really matter for when you get to the next round. It's uh, it's great. It's positive momentum. It's everything you want to do and, and think you should do. But, uh, you know, when it resets, it resets. And nothing that you've done in the past really matters as long as you're eligible for the bracket. So, um, you know, I'm a long, long ways from uh, using the word favorite or – feeling uh, overly confident. Other questions? Anybody? Lee and then Nate. You, you said something interesting on TV this week. You didn't say you'd be disappointed if you didn't win the championship. You said you would be devastated. And That was if I didn't win an, another, another one in my right, career. Right, right. I mean, not mm -hmm. just this one in particular, but you don't want to be a one title wonder. And just talk about why it's so important that you don't that you separate yourself from these guys that have just won one championship sure well i wrote a nice blog about it too in case you wanted a really in-depth answer because i knew somebody would ask me that and when i get up here uh on the media stand i always go ah, ooh, uh, you know uh and uh it's hard to answer without really sitting down and putting a lot of thought to it but um you know, kind of long story short, I feel like um, what we've been able to do to date um, is incredible, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, but kind of 2012 was such a blur for me. You know, it almost feels more like a dream. I feel like winning a second title would feel real, um, and it could eliminate you know, any doubts that I would have or anyone else would have for the remainder of my career, which would be incredible. 
Um, and, and to go with that, I think I have an incredible opportunity with some amazing people working on uh, uh, my team and the cars and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I want to make the most of that. I don't want to waste the opportunity. It's probably my number one pet peeve in life is people that waste their opportunity. And I have a phenomenal opportunity. Um, if I could add a couple more adjectives to that, I would. But it's, it's beyond a phenomenal opportunity. I don't want to waste it. I want to make the most of it. Uh, and this is our opportunity to strike. Nate? Uh Nate Ryan, USA Today Sports. Uh, I got something else to ask you about, but I want to follow up on that. Who are these, because I did read that blog, um, who are the people that you're trying to prove this to? Are, are they peers, or, or is it just fans that you feel like who have said that your first championship were, were a fluke, was a fluke? Well, I mean, I mean there's always yourself, right, which is the most important thing. Um, you know, there's uh, the people that I work with, right? Um, and then there's your peers, uh, and certainly the fan base is a part of it too. I think it's anyone and everyone, right? Um, but at the end, it's ultimately yourself. You know, and I feel like winning a first championship, like I said, was almost feels more like a dream than a reality. And I feel like a, a second one would feel like a reality. And it reminds me of a quote that Mark Martin had about winning his first race when he was in Victor Lane. And, and you know, I don't know it verbatim, but he said that you know his first win was great. And this is in Victor Lane, but winning the second race was would be a much more significant achievement uh, because of what it means to you personally and what it means to everyone else that no one can ever sit back and say, well, you know, on that day or on that year, things just all fell your way when you've won more than once. Second thing, um, how good is your car in relation to where you were in July? Are you, st you still feel like you're another zip code on the field? And, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to get in tomorrow. We, we haven't done anything in race trim, but... Uh, we felt like last, um, again, spring, our car was uh, not where we wanted it to be in qualifying trim. Uh, and we felt like that kind of handicapped us in a race and made us have to drive through the field a couple times, whether it was the start of the race or uh, through the pit cycles because of pit stall location. And uh, we put an extra emphasis on it today, and it's great to see us get rewarded for that. But uh, the uh, cost for that is to not have a great read uh, for where we are at in race trim, and we'll just work on that tomorrow. Let's go to Rick and then to Mike. Brad, you spoke a little this morning about um, about how winning in Chicago sort of changed the way you can you can approach these two weeks. Um, how much how much can you afford to take a chance on Sunday in a way that you might not have had you not had that that win? Well, you know uh, that's certainly a very common question and. Uh, my first thought to that is, you know, the last thing I want to do is go out there and wreck somebody for a win. And, you know, the win would mean something, don't get me wrong, but in the sense of the championship, it would mean nothing. Uh, and know that there's probably somewhere down the road where you'll have to pay for that. Uh, so in that sense, um, you know, you want to be respectful, right? Uh, I think more or less the opportunities or the doors that are opened up uh, with having a first win and being locked into the next round and, you know, these two races still, uh, you know, notwithstanding. I, I think those opportunities are in, you know, reliability uh, and strategy, uh, and that's probably all. Mike? Despite the resets you mentioned and the fact the chase is set up to be kept close, uh, if you win this week and or next week, is there a certain intimidation factor for everybody else? No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I put myself in everyone else's shoes, and um, if I was everybody else, I'd say I just want my cars to be fast for the last four races because that's when speed enters the equation. You know, the first three races are consistency, and the second three races are survival. Uh, the three races in the third bracket, was at the eliminator bracket, those are going to be speed races. Uh, and then the, the fourth race is going to be, you know, you're going to have to be fast at home, so you're going to have to be clutch. You know, no mistakes and rise up to the opportunity under high pressure. So in that sense, you know, we have a lot of speed and we're executing very well. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't be intimidated personally, but I can't speak for everyone else. Any additional questions? Lee? You sometimes just have to pinch yourself because, it. you know, we've gone through stages where 
Jimmy Johnson and Chad have come in. They've led all practices. They've led all qualifying. They go and they, you know, win the race. And, you know, people are saying, we don't think we have anything for the two. And Denny was asked earlier, and they said, do you think you'll ever have a car like you had the, you know, the time we, here when you're so dialed in? And he said something to the effect where I think the two stole it or, <laughs> you, you know, something, something yeah. of that nature. But you, you just kind of... <laughs> You said before you're like living in a dream. Does it still feel that way? I mean, you just seem to be clicking on it. Well, the, the great weekends seem to go by like a dream really fast, and you can't get enough of them, right? Um, and that's a good thing. I know they spoil you, that's for sure. Um, and you look at weekends where everything goes right, like Richmond was that scenario. I think Kentucky was that way. Uh, and, you, you know, you think to yourself, well, we should do this every weekend. And, you know, if you have the smallest hiccup <laughs> in the weekend's uh, proceeding, that you start to question everything. So in some ways, they're really dangerous. But, um, you know, when you get them, you have to be thankful for them and make the most of them. And we've been able to do that so far this year, and I hope we can continue to do so. Brad, again, congratulations, and uh, appreciate you coming in, and good luck this weekend. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.